are one.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of your church, you suffered on the cross and defeated death and the devil for us. Make us one as you and the Father are one. Unite us with you and as your body, the church, in sufferance and celebration, that the world may be drawn to you in the power of the resurrection. For you are risen and reign eternally with the Father and the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 1, verses 12 to 26. The apostles find a replacement for Judas. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called, in their own language, al kel that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle for today is from 1 Peter, uh, chapter 4, verses 12 to 19, and chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. Jesus suffered. As people connected to Jesus, we can expect to suffer also. Beloved, 
Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And, if the righteousness is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prays for himself and for us. Please rise to hear the gospel. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, as they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, for, that, for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorifying them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Lord. Let us confess our Christian faith, speaking the Apostle Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the sermon hymn. Mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear Christian friends, dear believers, Thursday, May 18th, 
the Christian Church celebrated the ascension of Jesus Christ to heaven. And for the early Christian Church, for the apostles and believers, disciples at that time, it was a sad day. Jesus went to heaven. And they didn't have the privilege now anymore to see him face to face. But Jesus said to his followers, to them and to us, that he will return in glory just as he departed. And before his departure, he reminds his disciples of all times that he will be always with them. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 28, we read Jesus' final words just before his glorious ascension. And he said, I am always with you, even to the end of the age. So Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, the crucified Lord, ate with his disciples of all times. He is with you. He is with me. But still, the ascension of Jesus Christ at that time was very sad for the apostles and disciples. But the work needed to be done. They needed to continue forward with God's message. And they have to do what the Holy Scriptures told them to do, as, like us. We have to do what the Holy Scriptures tell us. In our first lesson for today, the disciples are gathered. And by Peter's insistence, they will elect an apostle who will replace Judas, the betrayer. But why to elect an apostle? Well, as I said, to fulfill the Holy Scriptures. It was necessary to fulfill prophecy as it is written in Psalm 109, which says, let another take his office. Because of Judas' betrayal, he has to be stripped of the honor the Lord had given him to be an apostle of Jesus. And that a faithful disciple would take Judah's place as his apostle. The Lord's divine justice needed to be carried out. I wonder if Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justus, was relieved when that lot with Math Matthias' name came out of the jar. Do you ever think that? Do you, do you ever think about that? Whenever I have read this story before about choosing the man who replaced Judas, I have always taken it for granted that Joseph and Matthias wanted to be apostles. They were, they were eager to, to be an apostle. That, that they were both competing for these positions, like politicians do in elections in our time. But maybe it was not that way at all. Maybe they were hesitant for that position. Maybe they were filled with fear. Maybe they were both secretly hoping the other guy's name would come out. But someone had to do it. Someone had to do it. The Lord would have his 12 apostles. And so, to the side, they cast lots. They prayed. And the lot fell to Matthias, who tradition tells us was eventually stoned and then beheaded for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I bring up that alternative way of thinking about that story because it was not only Matthias that was chosen to fill an office. You are too. All of you, all of you have offices or callings or, or places in life where God has chosen you to serve. 
and there are offices, callings, and places where God has not chosen you to serve. Sometimes you are a Matthias, and sometimes you are a Joseph. And maybe sometimes you want those callings you do not have, and maybe sometimes you do not want the ones you do have, and maybe sometimes it changes. At times, you are happy with them, and at other times, it's just tough, difficult, hard, and you really wish the lot would have fallen to someone else. But it is you the Lord has chosen you. It is you. And his choice is always the right one, the right choice. But that sometimes frankly, hard to believe. It is easy to believe when things are going well. It is hard to believe when, like Matthias, the stones start flying because of where God put you in the calling he chose for you. But do not be surprised at that. Peter says in the epistle we heard today, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though some, something strange were happening to you. And also he says, do not be surprised when the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to devour you. So my dear friends in Christ, do not be surprised, do not be surprised that in all your offices and callings and places in life, as a parent, or a child, or both, as a caregiver, as a worker or a student, married or single, healthy or sick, rich or poor, lots of friends or few friends, old or young, confirmants or members of the council, ushers, trustees, etc. Do not be surprised if there is cross and suffering. If it happens to the shepherd, it will happen to the sheep. And when it does, when it happens, do this. If it comes because of your sin, repent and stop doing that. If it comes because of the sins of others, Forgive and keep forgiving. If it comes because of the name of Christ, rejoice and know that you are blessed. Because the spirits of glory and of God rest upon you. Now, to be honest, that's not what we usually do. We are used to thinking that the spirit of glory and of God resting upon us should mean that bad things do not happen. That life would be easy and smooth. And that I would always be happy and content. And that is what we want it to mean, isn't it? And there is a glory like that. The eternal glory in Christ. The glory of the Son in the Father before the world existed. And that glory is coming. But it is not yet. That glory will come. Peter says, after you have suffered a little while, when the God of all grace will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. But in the meantime... As we wait for our Lord to come again in that glory it, and take us to that glory, in the meantime, the Spirit of glory and of God still rests upon you. His Spirit given to you through water and the Word in holy baptism. But now, in this in-between time, this time between Jesus' ascension and he's coming again. Now, this glory is a different kind of glory. 
It is the glory of which Jesus prayed when he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. That's a different kind of glory because the hour Jesus is speaking of, there is the hour of his crucifixion where he died for us on the cross. Jesus prayed those words, those words from the Holy Gospel today in the Garden of Gethsemane. Earlier, he had prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Remove this cup of suffering, of wrath and forsakenness. Jesus knew what awaited him on, at the cross that it was not going to be easy. But to give this cup was his Father's will. And so Jesus, the always and ever obedient Son, will take it and drink it. And he did. He went to the cross and died for us. Now, that does not sound very glorious. But it is. For this is the glory of the Father to send His Son to be the offering for you. For your sins. You might not die, but live. And this is the glory of the Son. He comes not to be served, but to serve. And to lay down His life as a ransom for you. For each of you. And with this, God is glorified. For the cross show us what kind of God we have. A giving God, a loving God, a serving God. A God who would rather die for you than live without you. A God who creates, redeems, and sanctifies. A God of atonement and forgiveness and peace. And so, the cup of wrath and condemnation Jesus would drink for you in your place in order to give you another cup, a different cup, the cup of blessings, the cup of the New Testament in his blood that gives forgiveness for your sins, life to conquer death and salvation instead of condemnation. And there he forgives our sins. And give us the strength we need in this world. In this in-between time. That we are still living. The strength to live in the offices and callings and places he puts you. The strength to repent and to forgive and to lay down your lives for others. And so glorify God in your lives. So Jesus prays for you that you may do so. And he prays more. Father, keep them in your name. He does not pray, keep them in your power or in your might, but in your name. It is the name we start every service with. The name we end every service with. The name put upon you when you were baptized. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That name makes all the difference in the world. For it marks you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. It marks you as a child of God. It marks you as one who has received the gift of the Holy Spirit to keep you in the faith. To keep you safe from the evil one. And to keep you one with him and in him no matter what this world and life brings. Because Jesus knows it is not easy. It was not easy for him. And it is not easy for us. It's not going to be easy for us. For you, for me. He's going to put us in some tough offices and callings and places in life just like Matthias. Not to hurt you or harm you, but to bless others through you and to bless you through them. And that happened 
to the other guy too. The guy who lost the apostle lottery, Joseph. Though he was not chosen to be numbered with the twelve, or even with the seven deacons, tradition says that he too was killed for the faith. We do not know how much about him after this, but he had his callings too, and lived his Easter faith. A faith that gives a life that even death cannot take away. A faith that lives in the confidence of the empty tomb. A faith that knows that the glory of heaven is promised and coming. But that until then, there is no greater glory, no greater love than to lay down your life for another. That's what Jesus did for you and for me. And while you may not think you are worth it, he does. He would, he would do it again, in fact. But he does not have to. What he does instead is give you the victory and life that he won for you over and over again. That as often as you fall, as often as you doubt, as often as you waver and regret and question that your ever sin be wiped away with his, I forgive you. That your every doubt be answered with his, I love you. That your every weakness be strengthened by his strength. That your every question be silenced by his cross. That your death be overcome by his resurrection, that your life be joyful and eternal. For that's what Easter is all about. The season that this week is coming to an end. But the reality and truth that never ends, that is yours every day, to every day, to remember and relieve in your baptism and die and rise with him to a new life. Whether you are a Matthias or a Joseph or Fran or Lois or any believer. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. For Christ is ascended, he is ascended indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue collecting the offering, and we sing the hymn, Fruitful Trees, the Spirit's Sowing.
for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray with boldness and confidence because we know he hears our prayers. Because Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of the church. Watch over all who lead your people. Shape them to be men and women after God's own heart. Fool them with your words and sacraments and guide them to walk in your ways. We pray for our Synod President, Reverend Timothy Tusher, for our East Regional Pastor, Reverend Marvin Bublitz, our Circuit Counselor, Don Eskiman, and all pastors, deacons, and church workers of Lutheran Church Canada. Lead them as they lead us. Because Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, we pray for all who are suffering trials because of their Christian faith. Comfort them and lead them to rejoice as they share in your sufferings, that your glory is revealed. Because Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Holy Father, we grieve the divisions in our families, communities, world, and especially in your church. Keep all your people in your name, which you have given in the waters of, of baptism, and lead us to the unity we will experience fully with you in your kingdom. Because Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. O oh, great physicians, bind up the brokenhearted and heal those who are suffering in heart, soul, strength, and mind. We pray this day for those who are grieving, especially the family of Dolores Noonan, who passed away last week. We ask you to give them comfort as they mourn. We pray this day for those who, those who are suffering from illness and other problems, especially for Mary, for John, for Pastor Gerald and his wife Doreen, for Linda, for Wes, for Barb and Stu, for Lloyd and Elsie, for Mirja, for Vicky, for Patricia, for Dorothy, for Gerda, for Sandra, for Sarah, for Melissa, for Karen, for Shirley, for Nancy, for Sarah, for Alice, for Marcia, for Ed and Pam, for Rachel and her children, for Jason, for Barbara, for Walter and Donna, for Stan, for Becky, for Anna, for Delbert, for Grace, for Nancy, for Cheryl, for, and Pastor Ron Moore. We pray also for those we name in our hearts and minds. O oh Lord, we ask that you heal them and help them according to your good and gracious will. Because Christ is risen. Holy Father, your son pray for his people before his death, that they might be sustained in life and faith. Hear our prayers on behalf of all the families of, the, of these members of the congregation, especially for Harry and Sylvia, for Bogus and Janet, for Ben and Sandra, for Addison, for Catherine and Frances. Lord bless their life, be with them, and success and adversity and preserve them in repentance, faith, and hope all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Lord, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on the following members who celebrate their birthdays this week. We remember Katarina, Heidi, Susanna, John, Grace, Jonathan, Judy, Jacob, Erica, Martha, Niamut, Charlie, Sandy, and Caleb. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in your goodness and bless them with your abiding love all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of love and mercy, we ask your blessing toward those who are married and celebrate their wedding anniversary this week. We remember Harry and Sylvia. Keep them in love and unity, 
and keep their faith in you during difficult times. As well, we pray for your blessing toward Jana, Lee, and Eric, who will get married on May 26. O Lord, be their guide and counselor during their marriage life and keep their love till the end. Lord, in your mercy, O King of Kings, you arise to protect your people and scatter your enemies. Have mercy on all those who live in the world zone and social unrest. We remember Ukraine and Russia, Palestine, Israel, Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, and other nations who are in conflict. Protect them from all evil. Sustain them in times of anxiety and, and violence, and grant them repentant hearts to acknowledge you, our Creator and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, we trust, O oh Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for time is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you. 